Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Rhiannon and as you can tell by the thumbnail and the title, in today's video I'm going to be reading two books based around gods. Now, in order to get a little bit more specific, these books aren't just about gods in general, they are about killing gods, which is such a crazy concept, but as I mentioned, I have two books here that I put on my TBR, completely ignorant of the fact that they both had the same themes and plot point, and so I decided it would be fun to film a dedicated reading vlog where I read both of these books and share my thoughts on them with you guys. The first book I'm going to show you is God Killer by Hannah Kainer. This this is a very new release. I think it was the January Illumicrate book, if I'm not mistaken, and it is just absolutely beautiful. Now, a goal of mine is to read one subscription box book per month, which is why I actually put this one onto my TBR. And for this one, it just says, Kissin's family were killed by zealots of a fire god. Now she makes a living killing gods and enjoys it. That is, until she finds a god she cannot kill. Skady, a god of white lies, has somehow bound himself to a young noble, and they are both both on the run from unknown assassins. Joined by a disillusioned knight on a secret quest, they must travel to the ruined city of Blinraden, where the last of the wild gods reside, to each beg a favour. Pursued by demons and in the midst of a burgeoning civil war, they will all face a reckoning. Something is rotting at the heart of the kingdom and only they can be the ones to stop it. Doesn't that just sound amazing you guys? It sounds like it's going to be such a fast paced book. It's quite a short one as well so it should be perfect to fly through this weekend. I'm really happy to be prioritising this one. Hopefully I will love it. I've heard really good things about it and it has definitely had a lot of hype so that should be a good factor. And then the second book that I have is Warrior of the Wild by Trisha Levenseller. Now this was actually on my 12th books that will self-destruct list for last year. However, I did decide to keep a hold of this one because I did want to read it. That is why I'm now prioritising this one and reading it this month. If you don't know, Trisha Levenseller is the author of the Daughter of the Pirate King series. I don't know how many books is in that series, sorry, but I have just read the first one. I did really enjoy it. The writing style was easy to get into and it was a fast-paced read, which is something that I'm hoping this book will be as well. This one is a little bit different though. This is inspired by Norse mythology if you couldn't tell by the cover. And in this one, we follow Razmira, who has spent her entire life training to be the leader of their village. Before she can become the leader, though, she does need to compete in some trials and, of course, win the trials in order to prove that she is a woman and that she can handle being a leader of the village. Unfortunately, though, someone does sabotage her trials and this means that she is banished. Not only is she banished, her father then sends her on an impossible quest which is to kill a god. If she manages to kill a god and bring proof of this back to the village then she will be reinstated as the next village leader but if she doesn't she will of course lose her honour and every chance she has at coming back to her family. So even though we have two similar plot devices I feel like the reading experience for both of these is going to be so different. I have more of an idea of what to expect with Warrior of the Wild. I feel like with God Killer I'm just going in without really knowing anything and I'm just going to hope for the best. They are both short books though. I think that the audiobook for Warrior of the Wild is also on script, so I can always jump between the physical book and the audiobook. And I just can't wait to see what I think of both of these. I can't wait to see whether they are similar or whether they are vastly different. And I feel like having a reading vlog where I document my experience reading these is going to be a nice thing to look back on and will hopefully give you guys some insight into my thoughts on these books as well. I feel like I've been talking for a while now though, so I am going to end this clip here. I'm not actually sure when the next clip is going to be filmed, but I'm hoping that I can read these two books this weekend. I feel like I'm going to start off with God Killer. I just feel like I'm in the mood to pick this one up. So of course, once I have some initial thoughts, I will pick up the camera and talk to you guys about what I think of the book. Good morning everyone, it is currently Saturday the 8th of April and I do already have some reading updates for you. This morning I did decide to sit down and read a bit of God Killer. I am very pleased to say that I am so far enjoying it. I've made it up to page 93 which is chapter 11. I'm using the author note that I got from Illumicrate as a bookmark which is typical of me because I have loads of bookmarks but that was just in the book and it was easier to do that. Anyway, I have read this much which is definitely good going for this morning. This is only a short book as you guys can see. I 
don't actually know how many pages there are. I don't know if it's less than 300. I'm gonna try and look without spoiling myself. 288. So it is definitely one of the shorter books that I have on my TBR. I do just wanna quickly mention that I have had to just open the conservatory doors because there's a fly or something in here that is buzzing around. So <laughs> if you hear any background noise, I do apologize. And I may be speaking a little bit quieter because I live in a terraced house that has a lot of neighbors around me. So. <laughs> Apologies for that. But yeah, I am really enjoying this one so far. It throws you straight into the action from the first page. Things are going down and it is very, very intense. I will say though, weirdly, it's not a very fast paced book. It has taken me quite a while to actually get 100 pages in. I don't know if it's because the chapters are a bit longer or if it's just the author's writing style that I'm not used to, but I did find that to be an element of this book that kind of threw me off a little bit because I was sitting down, I was trying my best to read it and then I'd only read about 10 pages when I thought I'd read a lot more. So do be aware of that going in. It's a slower paced book, even though there are a lot of things going on. One thing I do love in this though, is that we do have four different perspectives from what I've read so far. We have Kissin, who is the main character. We have Inada and Skadi, who are bound together. So one of them is mortal, one of them is the god. And then we have a man called Elagast, who used to be friends with the king. And now the king has approached him with a problem and Elagast is now going going on a kind of quest to help his friend. At the point that I'm currently at in this book, all of our main characters have now come together. We haven't really seen anything more than that except that they're all in the same place and they have just kind of introduce themselves to each other. So I don't know where this is gonna go. I of course can't say too much and I don't wanna say too much because of spoilers. However, I'm very interested to see what actually happens with the dynamic of this group. It's definitely a weird one. They all believe in different things as well. And one of the main conflicts in this book is between humans and gods. So the royal family were actually killed by gods who were, I guess, jealous of lesser gods, except for one of them who is now the king and the king now has this vendetta against all gods and has tried his best to stop people from worshipping them. Hence where Kissing comes in as a god killer. However, deep-rooted faith is something that is very hard to just let go of and people don't want to let go of it of course and so we do see a lot of rebellion in this. We see people who are reluctant to let go of the old ways and who still pray to their gods and it will definitely be interesting to see how that plays a role in terms of our characters because as you guys know one of the main characters is bound to a god called Skadi. He is the little kind of rabbit there that has horns apparently. But yeah, they are bound. They are trying to find a way to get separated from each other so that both of them can live their respective lives. But this god is with Inara 24 seven. And so if they get caught, if someone sees them, they will of course find out that she has this god tied to her and then they will possibly both be killed. So there's a lot at stake here. I am really enjoying it as I mentioned we also have really good disability rep in here so our main character does have a missing limb it happens in one of the first chapters so it's not really a spoiler but there is something that happens to her and her family and as a result of that she does lose one of her legs we see her use a prosthetic leg built by one of her friends and then we also see her use a wheelchair as well and then as well as that we do also have a deaf main character in here and both of the main characters in here can actually use sign language and so we see that as a form of communication in here which was really interesting and was lovely to see actually because I know I haven't read a lot of books with deaf main characters in there so that was lovely to see I'm glad that that representation is in there and it's not just something that is thrown in there for the sake of saying that this book has representation or at least I don't think so of course I can't speak on the disability rep personally so I will try my best to link some reviews from own voices reviewers for you guys so that you can check that out for yourselves but I I personally thought it was done really nice. I don't know if they're gonna play a bigger part in the rest of this book or what, but at this current point, I am really enjoying it. It's quite a slow paced book, but I'm interested enough in the story to want to sit down and read it. And I do love all of the characters already. So this is shaping up to be a good book. I haven't actually started Warrior of the Wild yet because Tom and I do need to take Kiwi for a walk in a second. We are just gonna go somewhere where she can go off lead. I think we're actually gonna ask if Ads and Sean want us to take Flint as well, who is their black Labrador, because Ads is currently in Krakow and Sean is waiting for my brother to go over to fix their bathroom. It's 
a busy weekend for them so <laughs> Tom and I thought we should ask them if they wanted us to take Flint for a walk which will definitely be nice because we can let them off lead and they will both tire themselves out which is what we want. As well as that I will also need to have lunch I think Tom's gonna make us tacos we have hello fresh tacos that we need to cook which will be lovely and then I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do with the rest of the day I definitely need to do some housework so I think that's about when I will pop on the audiobook for Warrior of the Wild. I have a lot of clothes that I need to sort out especially now with it being so lovely I haven't even mentioned that yet but the weather today is stunning definitely cold but it is beautiful blue skies and I feel like that means a change in wardrobe needs to happen so yeah I'm gonna do that later on as well I'm gonna clean the bed sheets and just do a lot of boring chores around the house essentially so for now I'm gonna head off and do all the things I just mentioned and I will come back afterwards and update you guys once I have a bit more to say on these two books <laughs> Your friends. Hi. I'm so disappointed. I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to remember. i so Maybe you can feel the pressure that I've been living on. I can say that it's been on my mind, but I Right, I finally have some more updates for you guys. First off, I will continue to let you guys know my thoughts on God Killer. I didn't read too much more of this when I sat down later on. I got to page 147, so chapter 17, and it's about halfway through the book, I'd say. So not as far as I wanted to get through it. I definitely wanted to read about another 100 pages or so, but I think I'm gonna try and read up to page 200 tonight. It is currently 20 to 11 at night now so I am updating you very late I am sorry I am debating though whether I just want to go to bed and watch Netflix because I've had a week off for Easter already and I feel like I haven't really let myself relax too much I've been filming I've been reading which are things that definitely relax me however there's always that kind of pressure there for some reason that I put on myself because it's content I guess so with that comes the editing process and the uploading and all the tedious little bits it. So I've constantly been thinking like, oh, I need to film this, I need to read this, I need to do this. And I feel like I just want to watch something tonight, to be honest with you. So maybe I will leave this off until the morning. I will hopefully read another 50 pages though. I would really like to get to page 200 of this just because I can sit down tomorrow morning then and power through. My thoughts on this haven't really changed. Nothing has really happened, to be honest with you. Our characters are further along now in their own personal journeys. They have have come together with one goal in mind for all of them and it's very interesting to see how they all interact and how each of them will play into everyone's end goals. Aside from that though, nothing new has really popped up. We're still kind of trying to get to where we need to be but we are of course learning a lot of details about the different characters and their pasts and we find that these may be more connected than they first thought. 
it. Moving on from that though, because again, I don't want to give too much away. I have shocked myself, you guys, because you saw that I started Warrior of the Wild earlier, and I don't think I started it until about five o'clock. And so the fact that I've made it up to page 232, which is chapter 18, is mind blowing to me. So I have read this big chunk and I only have this little chunk left. This is such a fast paced read, you guys, if you couldn't tell. Again, I don't wanna go too much into the story because I don't wanna spoil it for you guys. However, I feel like the synopsis for this was pretty vague and I just didn't know what to expect from it. However, as you guys know, because I will have told you previously, our main character is set up to be the next leader of this village. All she has to do is pass some trials and then after that she will become a woman and she will then go on to be able to follow in her father's footsteps. That of course doesn't happen, she does end up getting banished and I did guess the twist early on in this. There is a twist, I saw it coming, it was still pretty sad for me to see the character go through what she went through but in my head something just wasn't right the whole time and yeah I did figure that one out so I guess you could say it's a little bit predictable but that might just be me diving too much into it. I do tend to read books kind of critically without realising it sometimes and as I mentioned that's just something I picked up on. However our main character is banished to the wilderness and she she is tasked to kill a god. However, when she gets to the wilderness, she actually stumbles upon two other boys. She ends up saving one of them, and because of that, he thinks that he is indebted to her. And so he kind of tags along, even though she doesn't really want him to, and all of them do eventually form a bond. The found family trope in this is something that I really didn't expect, but I think it's such a nice element to this book. I feel like if our main character was out there by herself trying to do all this stuff, I'd find it a little bit unbelievable. However, with these two other characters, is there you really see their struggles and how they ultimately have to work together in order to complete all of their challenges and go back to their families. I will actually highly recommend the audiobook for this. I've been loving listening to it and I did read along physically at some points however I didn't really need to because I retained all the information, I wasn't getting distracted at any point and so I feel like the audiobook was definitely a good way for me to go with this one. I feel like it made it a lot easier for me to read it maybe if I was reading it physically I would have struggled a little bit just with the simplicity of the writing however listening to it I feel like it made it a lot better I have read from Trisha Levenseller before but again it was through audiobook I listened to Daughter of the Pirate King and I had the same thoughts where I feel like her writing is definitely simplistic but I really did enjoy the story because of how kind of fast paced it was and the overall plot behind it so I'm definitely getting the same vibes with this one of course the setting in this is completely different we are in a Viking era world where people can choose which profession they want to go into by the time that they're adults so our main character decided to be a warrior which is why her trial consisted of a lot more violent things and why her banishment was so severe other people could be blacksmiths they could be cooks they could be seamstresses all the things that you need in order to ensure that your village is going to thrive essentially and it's definitely nice to see all those different aspects in this little village I will say though that the people in her village absolutely suck. They are all horrible including her own family or at least some of them and yeah I did feel really sorry for her and if I was her I would not go back but <laughs> all that aside I'm having a really good time with this one. As I mentioned it's such a fast paced book. I don't know how many pages there are in this to be honest with you around 330 I think so I don't really have too much longer to go according to Goodreads if I'm remembering correctly I'm currently 70% of the way through so I only have 30% to go which again is definitely doable for me tomorrow I have so much that I need to do around the house again I just want to clean the kitchen clean the conservatory and things like that so I think I'm going to wake up pop my headphones in and just get it over and done with and then that way I can kill two birds with one stone and listen to this audiobook as well. Before then going on to finish God Killer. I will say whereas gods are pretty central in this book I wouldn't say that we've seen a lot of the god in this one. We see him at the start when he takes a sacrifice and takes money from the people in the village. After that our main character does encounter him when she first is banished but then because so many other things 
things are going on, that is kind of put to the side and I feel like we're gonna get a big showdown at the end between our main character and this god. So very interesting to see how this sort of thing is tackled by two different authors. I'm really enjoying both of them. I was scared that I was gonna get quite bored but I'm really not. They are two stories that are different enough and yeah I'm just so intrigued by both of them. I can't tell you which one I prefer at the minute just because the reading experience for Warrior of the Wild has been a lot easier for me. God Killer has definitely taken me a lot longer to get through than I thought it would but I definitely feel like God Killer is a lot more complex than Warrior of the Wild so I think it all balances out anyway and yeah I am really enjoying both. Also I do just want to mention quickly how beautiful is this cover you guys. These are our three main characters and I love the fact that we have artwork on the book itself of these characters because as I was reading it was so cool to be able to picture them so I'm really glad that I have the Illumicrate edition. Not that it affects the story at all in any way but yeah that's just a little element there that I wanted to show you guys because I feel like it's really hard to picture characters in your head sometimes and this has just brought them to life for me. So these are the characters that I'm thinking of when I'm reading this book and yeah it's just a little thing that I thought I should show you but aside from that it is late now so I am gonna go to bed whether I read God Killer or not I'm not too sure yet probably not to be honest with you but either way both of these will be done tomorrow I've read 378 pages so far today which is mind-boggling to me because I've just been so sumpy recently as you guys know so I have essentially read a full book today if you think of it in terms of page count which is definitely good going so I'm not too mad at myself and yeah if I don't read that it's fine I will just smash it out tomorrow but I probably won't update you now until I finish these two books just because I feel like this vlog has been a little bit long it definitely had a lot of b-roll in because I've tried to film a lot today whilst I've just been pottering about I didn't want to give you guys too many clips of me talking because I know that can be a little bit boring sometimes but then I haven't really left the house to do anything interesting either so <laughs> I hope you enjoyed spending the day with me and I will chat to you guys tomorrow I'm convinced that I've already filmed this wrap-up for you guys however I cannot find it anywhere and so here we are two weeks after I finished the books to wrap up this vlog and for me to share my thoughts on these books with you. I can honestly say that I did have a really good time reading both of these. Warrior of the Wild was definitely easier to get into and to read whereas God Killer was a bit of a drag at some points. It was definitely a slower read and I did find myself getting pulled out of the story quite a bit just because I couldn't focus on what was going on, whether that was the writing style, Style, whether it was just me being dense I'm not too sure but as I mentioned I did really enjoy both I'm not too sure on the ratings I was gonna give both of these four stars however looking back it's more like a three stars for both I did enjoy them as I said but they're not really gonna stick with me Warrior of the Wild as I mentioned was just an easy read however it wasn't the best written book I've ever read and then God Killer was really intriguing it had such a good premise the ending really got to me as well so I will be reading the sequel however bits of it did drag and I feel like it was a long book for such a short book if you get what I mean. If I did give out half stars these would both get 3.5s. I would highly recommend both don't get me wrong but there are some things from both books that just didn't work for me this time round. I'll start off with God Killer though I have given you most of my thoughts on this one so far. The beginning of this book was so action-packed however the middle bit did really drag and I did feel like I wanted to put this book down because it was just taking me so long to read it and then in contrast to that I feel like the ending was a little bit rushed everything happened so quickly and I feel like I missed quite a lot of things to be honest with you one thing I really did enjoy though was seeing these characters come together and form a friendship they really do go through a lot of character development throughout this book and it's very interesting to look back at where they were at the start of this book as to where they are now because so much has happened and yeah all of them have really grown you see how each individual character is dealing with some sort of trauma from the past which was done in such a good way I felt for each and every single one of them and I'm really happy that there was this found family trope in there because I'm not sure if I mentioned earlier I love a found family trope so it was definitely a nice surprise to have it in this book it was so heartwarming and yeah this book ended with a bang a lot of stuff 
have happened and as I mentioned I can't wait to pick up the second book once it is released. This did come out this year though so we might have to wait a bit for that one however I am glad I read it even though it's not an all-time favourite book of mine now. I enjoyed the story, I loved seeing the characters as I mentioned and I am very intrigued to see where this story is going to go from here. And then of course we have Warrior of the Wild. A big theme in this book was female empowerment as you probably could have been able to tell by the synopsis. Rosmira is such a strong female character in this book and despite all the odds she still does believe in herself and wants to prove herself to everyone else because she knows how good she is and she knows that she has been wronged. There was a relationship in here which at first I wasn't a massive fan of however our main character has gone through something in the past which means that she does have a hard time trusting people especially boys and so to see this friendship develop into a relationship it was very much believable and to see her be in a healthy relationship as well with someone who genuinely does want to help her and make sure that he can give his all to her which was quite refreshing actually because I feel like we don't really get too many healthy relationships in books nowadays but yeah I really did like seeing that aspect of it. We do also have a gay character in here which I don't think I've mentioned previously so we do have some LGBTQIA plus representation in there which is always wonderful to see and again it wasn't anything that was thrown in there just to be thrown in there I don't think it was something that did add to the story and again I really loved that relationship as well it was so sweet and wholesome and yeah I had a good time reading about it the audiobook was definitely a good route for me to go down as you guys saw I listened to the majority of it in an afternoon it was so easy to just fly through and I feel like it definitely held my interest a lot more than it would have been held had I read the physical book so I was very very thankful that the audiobook was available and that I did have such a good time listening to it. I would highly recommend you guys pick it up if you do have script or if you don't but we're thinking about reading this book then I would as I've mentioned highly recommend the audiobook. It is fantastic, it's easy to follow along with what is happening in the story and each character's voice is distinctive enough as well so that you can differentiate between the different characters. The climax at the end of this book was very well thought out, I felt like the pacing of it really was good as well. The only thing I will say is that it was a little unbelievable at some points which I did kind of expect going into it to be honest with you. Things do happen and you do see the struggles behind it however these things are meant to be impossible to complete and then our characters managed to somehow do it without really giving it much thought and so yeah that was the only thing I would say about this book is that sometimes it can be a little bit unbelievable and you do have to suspend your disbelief a little bit but other than that it was a good time. I would recommend it if you guys like a strong female protagonist in an awesome inspired world where a lot of different creatures exist and where danger is all around them. Kiwi has made it onto the scene so sorry if the camera moves or anything like that but please do let me know if you've read any of these books and if you have please do share your spoiler free thoughts with me in the comments down below. I'm really glad that I decided to do this vlog. I'm so angry at myself though for losing the clip that I filmed because as I mentioned I definitely filmed an outro for this vlog but I just can't find it anywhere so sorry to be popping back in now however I really hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. It was so fun for me to dedicate a weekend to just sit down and read these two books. I do like it when my books have a certain theme that is similar and so if you guys want to recommend me a theme, if you guys want to see me read another two books in a weekend please do leave that down below as well. If you have made it this far through into the video and would like to let me know that you're still here please go ahead and leave me an axe emoji down in the comments. I say it all the time but seeing you guys comment the emoji of the video truly does mean the world to me so if you are still here but don't have anything in particular that you would like to say please do make sure to go ahead and leave me the emoji as well as that please don't forget to click the like button if you like this video and the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content from me I do have a murder mystery themed reading vlog coming your way very soon so definitely keep your eyes peeled for that as well as a bunch of fun videos as well. So if that does sound like something you'd be interested in watching please go ahead and click the subscribe button now and you can also click the little notification bell so that you get notified when I post a new video. But that is it for me today guys, thank you so so much for watching, it truly does mean the world to me and I will see you soon in my next video. Goodbye!